So the Consumer Electronics Show has grown into the world's largest annual trade show for consumer technology. More than 130,000 attendees will pass through the turnstiles this year. Among them, our next guest from the Las Vegas Convention Center, the site of CES 2014 Consumer Trends and Technology expert, Todd Townsend. Good morning, Todd. How are you? Hey, Mike. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Fantastic. Hey, throughout the history of this, uh, the CES, the, the trade show, a lot of products have come out of the, the trade show that were kind of debuted here. Any that have had the biggest, uh, most meaningful impact? Can you think of a few? Oh, well, okay, this show started in 1967, and some of the, the things we've heard about in the past that we used for out our, throughout our lives were here. So originally, the original video cassette recorder, for those who remember what that <laughs> yeah. is, was launched at CES, as was the original DVD player, first high-definition televisions, HD radio, Blu-ray player. All these things we hear about and have used in our daily lives, many of them were launched here at the Consumer Electronics Show. It actually started in New York City back in the late 60s, and is, as you said, since moved to Vegas because it's just absolutely massive. To give people an idea of just how big this is, it's over 30 football fields Holy worth of technology God. being shown around here on the floor. So Incredible. it is just truly huge. And there's just stuff here that's going to be available today as well as well into the future. Some really cool stuff, Mike, uh, different things this year that are also futuristic. For example, Whirlpool is here with something they're calling their credenza concept. I have it here in front of me. Mm -hmm. And this is, what they're trying to do is connect consumers to their home appliances going forward with technology and kind of bring that future into focus. And this is, has three refrigeration zones. It's like a secondary room device. So if you have a den or something and you want to entertain this, you can have that in your den and it actually functions as a piece of high-tech furniture oh, wow. at the same time, which is really, really kind of neat. So they're here just showing this as a concept to kind of get ideas about where to go in the future. It's a lifestyle product and that style out of the 50s and 60s, but, but updated for today. Now, wow. something that I guarantee your viewers have not seen before because we've got the world's first here, and I mean that. This is the world's first curved, flexible smartphone by LG. It's called the LG Flex. It's got a six inch curved screen. It's actually curved. You hold this thing in your hands. It's like having a mini movie theater. It's, a, it's got this really cinematic viewing experience in your hands. Huh. It fits to your face nicely because it's curved so that it's really loud and clear to talk on. Now, as you can see the curve in that, watch this. When I say flexible, I've got it here on the table. I can actually literally just push right down and it will flex and flatten. And so if you stick this in your pocket or if you happen to drop it on the floor, it's much less likely to break. And this is a huge deal because not just the device, but the flexibility of electronics is a huge thing going forward over the next few years. We're going to see that in a lot of things. But this, this phone is fantastic. It's the latest Android phone. It's got a super high-end processor. This massive six-inch screen. It's kind of between a tablet and a phone, but still thin enough to fit right into your pocket. Uh, the keys are on the rear. So yeah. it's just a really futuristic thing that lets you actually get a lot of work done on a small mobile device. But that curved screen, I'll tell you, it's really, really cool. Some other things that are here are more technology going into things we may already use in our daily lives, mm -hmm. like a bicycling. If you're a big bicyclist and you want to try a bunch of different routes, you can't really pull out your device and, and look at maps while you're biking. At least you shouldn't do that. But this is from Schwinn, and this is called the Cycle Nav, and it attaches to your handlebars and then connects through Bluetooth to your phone to give you real-time turn-by-turn driving or biking directions, as well as information about your ride, like calories burned and how far you've gone and how fast you're going. Um, things like uh, drop cam wireless camera here. This consumer camera hooks up to your home Wi-Fi network. Very, very easy to set up and lets you monitor with real-time live video what's going on in your home or office through your smartphone. So if you know you have kids at home or the babysitter's there, you just want to keep a lookout on your house for security mm -hmm. purposes, you can set these up easily, as many as you want in the house, and monitor your home. Uh, something else that's really, really big here at the show are wearables. And they started to be last year and the year before with some of the wristbands, and now we're hearing about some of these smart watches. This is the LG uh, LifeBand Touch. This is one of these body monitoring devices you wear. It's very futuristic. It's the second plus generation of these. It's got a high-end OLED screen that turns on by motion. It knows when you're picking it up, so it just turns on. And you can monitor things like your heart rate, how fast you're moving, how many steps you've taken. And what's cool about this, too, it comes with the headphones, and they look like headphones. You listen to, to music, make a call. But these are actually what are used to monitor your heart rate through your ear. So you can wear this thing around listening to music or whatever, but you're monitoring your body at the same time. And this is really big. This is something we're going to see in the future more and more of. Uh, devices that you can wear on different parts of your body and give you real-time information on the world about you. Yeah, a lot of these products, are they available now or do we have to wait a while before they are available to consumers? 
Well, you know, CES is kind of a three-tiered deal, and what I mean by that is you see one tier is things that are either available today or will be very soon. Yeah. Then in the middle, you have things that may be available over the next year or so, and you have far out things like this credenza concept where they're here to test the waters and say, this is kind of the direction we think we're headed in the future. So yeah. it's kind of all three, but I'm telling you, the future is bright. There's all kinds of cool stuff, and there's something for everybody out there. Yeah, if you're a gadget guy like me, you, you, you got to love that show, and I bet you're having a good time down there. How about a website that our viewers can follow up with? Well, if you want to find out about something like this concept credenza, you can go to ces.whirlpool.com. For the phone, you can go to lg.com. If you want to just get an overview of the show, there's a lot of those really good tech blogs out there. You can go to things like GigaOM, to The Verge, to Engadget. Uh, there's all kinds of places online to read up on what's going on. They're all covering it here real time. So check it out. There's a lot to learn. If you're a gadget geek, you'll just be reading stuff all week. You won't be bored. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Todd. Have a good time down there in Vegas with the show. Sounds like a great time. Thanks for your time. Hey, morning. thanks for having me on. You betcha. Mary, over to you.